And we are live. All Sweet. right. Um, welcome to the, the second session of the day. Um, it's something that I'm also like really, really looking forward to. Um, with me here is Felix. Uh, hey, Felix. Hi. Um, Felix is a student from Finland, and um, we'll be going like, yeah, on an adventure because Felix made a underground tennis battle game in Rust, and we're just like gonna see what this is all about. Um, uh, I'll be like, uh, Felix, you would just like start playing, yep. um, walk through the game, tell us a little bit about it. Um, I may ask them questions. I will also keep an eye on the chat. If like questions pop up in real time, I'll try to relay them to you. And then we're just going to have like a good old time, right? Um, if you're ready with your screen share, we can yep. switch that over. Sweet. All right. Okay, All right. so this is actually... Uh... Uh, something I rendered out earlier of me uh, playing with a friend uh, because that was tricky to coordinate to happen uh, online. So it's a uh, basically it's it's a sort of a pong like game with uh, extra steps. Um, the uh, sort of start of the idea was uh, uh, that I actually wanted to uh, experiment with a uh, netcode a netcode model uh, called a rollback netcode, and I figured that I wanted a sort of uh, simple game to start off with, you know, something something easy. So I figured Pong, that's nice, a uh, simple two-player game. And then I sort of kept adding elements and it sort of got out of control. Uh, but it's uh, it's pretty pleasant to play now, at least. Uh, so I've got that going uh, for me. Uh, it's uh, entirely written in Rust. Uh, oh yeah, uh, sorry about the, uh, uh, the dress code, uh, actually, the thing to go to after this. <laughs> I, I'm not uh, dressed up entirely just for this, although it is very exciting to be here. It would be really nice if, like, every yeah. speaker just like showed up in like you know black tie dress code. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe next time. Yeah. But yeah. It's uh. So yeah, it's a uh, multiplayer thing, uh, written entirely in Rust. Uh, and I guess I could uh, show off a bit of the uh, features that I have. Actually, mm -hmm. where did I put my notes? Uh, there, put that over there. So, right, it's um, just tell me if the uh, audio is too loud or too quiet. Um, that's good. I appreciate yeah. some like sound effects. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it's sort of modeled after like fighting games where you have a pretty diverse uh, roster of uh, characters uh, with different sort of abilities. And I knew that uh, one of the uh, characters that I wanted to have early on was somebody who just. Uh, doesn't let you play uh, Pong. So I wanted somebody <laughs> that could just uh, force you to play Breakout instead. Like uh, this sort of thing is oh, uh, what I had in mind. And in general, uh, I've been trying to keep uh, keep uh, keep it possible, to keep it open to the uh, possibility of uh, lots of different sort of uh, Varied abilities that break the game in different ways. I'm pretty sure it's not balanced, but I'm not actually sure uh, which character is the least balanced right now. So it's balanced in a way, at least. Um, so yeah, there's uh, a few different characters. Uh, there's an AI with a bunch of different difficulty levels. Uh, mm -hmm. There is uh, net play, which uh, is quite functional, uh, despite my uh, attempts otherwise. Uh, and yeah, I guess I'll uh, I'll talk a bit about the uh, sort of bits that make it up. Uh, yeah. There's already the question uh, about the handling of netcode. Do you want to um, jump yeah. right in on this? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, yeah, because this was going to be like a more interactive thing. Okay. This. Yeah, I don't really have that much prepared other than uh, this. <laughs> uh, all right. So yeah, the first question was then from, uh, I, I assume people can see the chat, maybe? Maybe I can also just like read out the yeah. entire. So uh, Angel on F on Fire um, asks, uh, "Oh, I'm interested to hear how you're handling netcode," um, and I'm just like that. I the spoilers for a later session, so I will like yeah. not read the rest. So okay, um, uh, yeah, I uh, so the uh, sort of there, there's two layers to it. On one hand, there's the uh, sort of underlying transport layer, uh, which is the sort of semi-reliable UDP thing. Uh, which is not very good. Uh, if the game isn't open source right now, it's partially just because of that. Uh, I don't want anyone else using that and uh, making something bad. I promise I'll swap it out at some point. Uh, but the other Fair. part is the, uh, the sort of rollback part. And that, that part's uh, mostly solid. And this is a, a net 
networking model that's uh, it's been pretty popular recently-ish in fighting games, uh, and isn't really used outside of that. It's uh, basically it's uh, a lockstep networking model where you have two different simulations of the game and you uh, run the same inputs on both of them and they both do the exact same thing. Uh, so your game needs to be fully deterministic for this to uh, work. The uh, sort of uh, the problem with that kind of model, and I mean, it works quite well for games like uh, real-time strategy games where uh, you don't really need a, a direct response from your input. Like you can click uh, a guy and tell him to move somewhere and uh, like uh, 50 milliseconds later, he starts moving and that's fine. Uh, because you know you need to wait for the uh, command to get sent to the other guy and back again. Uh, so uh, the uh, the problem with that for something like a fighting game where you want like real tight real time yeah. interactions is that it well it feels terrible to press a button and then much later it actually uh, goes through wobbles uh, yeah yeah and uh, absolutely terrible if you get things like uh, uh, packet loss from uh, well just routers being routers uh, whatever somebody puts on the microwave. Uh, and then you, you have everyone has to just pause for that one person to catch up. It's uh, it's an unpleasant experience. Uh, so with Rollpack, you have the uh, sort of speculative execution layer on top. Uh, so instead of uh, immediately, or instead of having to wait for the uh, sort of input to come from your opponent, you uh, you just assume that the opponent is going to send the same input as they did last time, and then you just uh, simulate with that assumption in mind. And uh, if you are wrong. No problem. You have the old state saved, so you just uh, roll back. That's the name uh, to that previous state, and just tick through the inputs again. Uh, and this, of course, uh, needs a couple of things, uh, which Rust uh, helps quite a bit with. One is you need your game to be like deterministic. Uh, if your game runs differently on different computers, I mean that's a no go from the start. You need uh, you need people to you know run the same game. Otherwise, uh, you put in the same inputs and you get divergence immediately, and that's uh, just doesn't work. And the other thing is. Uh, you really want uh, to sort of separate your different components. Like uh, in when you update your game, you can't also render it at the same time where you'd be rendering like five frames or whatever when you do the sort of rollback and speculative execution stuff. And uh, Rust really helps with that stuff. And I can actually show the, uh, I've got a, uh, I think this is the file. I've got a, uh, there we go. There's the trait, nope. Back game. So I've got actually a trait here, and this is all I need to uh, sort of implement a game. Uh, my sort of network layer is entirely divorced from the uh, the game itself, which is another huge benefit of this. Like most uh, games, uh, when you're networking things, you need to really think about the networking for all the different abilities. Like how should just this be shown on the server? How should this be predicted locally for players? Things like that. Uh, in this case, I can uh, run the game uh, or program the game and just completely ignore uh, how the netcode works, which is fantastic also for the uh, implementing abilities and things like that. Like normally you might have a, a headache when you like sort of introduce a new entity and it needs to be uh, synchronized across clients. Uh, and here I, I really just don't care. It's uh, lovely. Uh, and all I really need, this is get the winner and like knowing if the game is over is like a convenience thing. It's nice to know when the uh, game should end. But otherwise, it's really just a single function that sort of advances the game state and returns the new game state. I put in inputs, and I get a new game state out. So it's uh, it's very uh, sort of functional in that sense. Yeah, sweet. Um, and then, of course, uh, I need to be able to clone the game state, too. And uh, there's trait bounds, because things need to be sent over the network and things like that. Really, the input is just a pod type. But I don't know if there's like a pod super trait in uh, Rust. That's, uh, that's really what I want. Uh, <laughs> Cool. I yeah, think this, I this answered the question um, yeah. very thoroughly, but it was super interesting. Um, I'll go with like a lighter question um, yeah. next. Um, what's your favorite character to play as? We already uh, saw the a, wizard. and That's um, a hard one, because uh, okay. I mean, I like them all in their own way. Like, obviously, you like your own, uh, you like your own babies. Like, that's, uh, <laughs> you can't pick. Uh, but if I'm going to do, I mean, conceptually, like, default is maybe the least interesting. Like. Hmm. She's really fun to play as, but also this is like literally is the first character that I added. Actually, I, uh, well, she does have curveballs and some supers and things hmm. like that. I can actually, I have a folder here of, uh, she's actually the sort of uh, the oldest stuff in the game. I actually have, where did I put that folder? Somewhere on the desktop. That was a mistake. Hmm. Uh, there we go. So 
this is actually a default being played here. Uh, you can tell she's got the curveballs, which she still has. Uh, mm -hmm. Make that a bit bigger. Uh, but yeah, the visuals here aren't quite as uh, meaningful, which is a big problem. I found that uh, once I added sprites, the game made a lot more sense to people. Mm -hmm. uh, different colored circles just really aren't great at conveying uh, hitting a ball or being hit by a ball, things like that. But yeah, so that's like the oldest mm -hmm. one. But it, I really like uh, playing as her, and she's got some really tight things. Uh, I really like Witch recently, though, actually. I'll do training mode. No, because that's going to reset things, I think. Let's see. This is, by the way, a fantastic feature to have. Uh, just uh, The training mode? A, a mode where you can just sort of mess around, like just having, uh, being able to sort of set up whatever scenarios you want. Uh, it's really yeah. helpful for debugging and reproducing things. So with this one, you can sort mm -hmm. of like launch these arrows. And then if you press a button again, you relaunch them. Well, that wasn't supposed oh. to happen. Uh, it's supposed to hit the ball. So there's a bug there. <laughs> oh, there it worked. OK, maybe there's some sort of rendering offset here or something. Uh, which uh, I like conceptually a lot. Uh, I'm terrible at it so far because you have to remember which uh, arrow corresponds to what. But I this think is why uh, you put in like the the numbers to see like okay what's the yeah the numbers are sort of numpad notation. Uh, so like if you look at a number pad, okay. you can see that okay, okay three is in the bottom bottom right hand corner. It's a convention that they use quite often for fighting games because otherwise it gets sort of a wordy talking about like bottom right corners and like a quarter circle yeah. from uh, left to down or something like that. Uh, yeah, see. so that's that's my favorite character uh, conceptually so far. Uh, cool. Although, well, I, I like a lot of the powers. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to choose. Okay. Did you all like think of the, the, the powers and the characters yourself, or do you have like? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I do talk to people, but uh, I do also uh, like I, I keep a sort of running uh, running document of uh, sort of different ideas uh, that I can sort of go mm -hmm. together, and I do try to keep my uh, my sort of design brain and code brain separate uh because like i find if i don't it's very easy for me uh, sort of i mean i suppose a lot of people that are going to be writing things in rust and making uh, their own engines have a sort of engineering mindset where it's like oh this is a really cool problem like this is the sort of thing i want to do and uh that uh sort of restricts creativity in a way i mean it lets you do some interesting things but i also find that it's nice to uh sort of separate my uh, design brain and code brain and uh, have the designer think about whatever dumb ideas he has. And then Thanks. the uh, code code me has to say, oh, no, how am I going to handle time travel? <laughs> um, uh, time yeah. travel was actually, that was a big issue, because I can I can roll back to uh, well, quite late. Uh, if I cheat a bit here and give myself, uh, this is also cheat menus are fantastic. Mm. They do break replays. <laughs> Uh, but they're really convenient for showing things off. I can uh, I can time travel and uh, run the game backwards for a bit. Uh, With sound effects. Amazing. Which is uh, fun. And like you can you can you can uh, rewind uh, losses and uh, wins uh, for uh, if you really want to taunt someone, you can uh, rewind and then win again. Uh, but that obviously causes well, not obviously. I suppose it depends on how you have things set up, but uh, it does cause issues, especially when you want your game state to be uh, very copyable, because uh, the netcode involves storing a bunch of game states, and then each of those game states also involves storing uh, like the 500 past game states before it. Uh, so that ends up multiplying out, and uh, is a lot of copying. Uh, I, uh, I try to keep my game states uh, very flat as a uh, result so that it can just be uh, sort of blitted uh, rather than having to uh, actually go and uh, chase uh, pointers and boxes and clone all of those. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, what else was there? Um, yeah, I think like when there's a yeah a question about like the, your design process, but also like yeah. Mark with a Q, how did you go about the art? Uh, did you make it yourself? Oh, yeah. Is it an art? The, art? No, the art is all uh, the art is all taken from uh, itch.io. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a fantastic website uh, for people making indie games, uh, both to uh, sort of share them. That's where the uh, game is hosted right now. Uh, they have a really nice pipeline for deploying to it, too. Uh, and it's also a marketplace for uh, assets and things like that. So there's a bunch of really cool stuff on there. And um, basically, at some point, like, the problem was, usually I, I do a lot with uh, programmer art, and that's mostly fine. Uh, but for this, I really needed the uh, 
the sort of conveyance that you get with actual sprites. And yeah. it really does help the game a lot. I do intend on replacing it all eventually. Uh, uh, but for now, I'm uh, quite happy with it. Like you can really, yeah. you can tell what's going on. People are yeah, swinging nice. things and hitting balls. Uh, it works out. Um, there's one more that I also find uh, quite interesting. Like, what's your design process, like design to implementation? Uh, yeah. Like adding uh, new mechanics, balancing. Yeah. Is it hard coded? Is there config files? Kind of. It's it's a mix. Uh, so I guess the first, the design stuff, I guess, well, maybe I just start with finding a sprite. I'm not sure at this point. Uh, it's a mix. Uh, I do have like some sort of concepts that I want to do. Uh, but what I end up doing is uh, I do have uh, basically, Characters are config files, but there's also a lot of hard-coded elements. So if I bring up, say, uh, what do we have? The wizard? No, nope, that's the witch. Uh, we could do the witch. Uh, so I use uh, Ron, uh, which is a, a sort of, uh, I think it's Ron Rusty Object Notation, which is a sort of okay. JSON-like thing uh, that's more in line with the uh, Rust uh, data model. So it has like mm -hmm. native representation for nums and stuff. Uh, you also don't need to put quotes in front of all your uh, uh, properties, which is really pleasant. There's trailing commas. Uh, you can add comments, which is fantastic if you're like yeah. actually doing sort of significant stuff with configs. And I know, uh, I think Bevy at least also uses Ron. I know a few other people use it. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Uh, so I do, I have a uh, sort of basic properties. Uh, that's just sort of what you'd expect. Uh, there are some uh, accelerations, some speeds, some... Uh, and then I have uh, sort of this animation system, which is really a sort of uh, wild uh, scripting system, uh, where uh, really uh, I'm just using enums for everything. I, uh, I step through uh, a list of enums and uh, do stuff uh, based on which enum is the sort of current thing. So for like an animation, I... Uh, have this uh, this display sprite number zero for six frames, and uh, well, it does that. And then it uh, goes all the way down here, it hits the end, and it looks and sees that all oh, this was a loop, so it just starts over. And uh, a lot of stuff is pretty generic, like showing sprites is pretty generic. And then there's a sort of slightly less generic things like uh, setting uh, the velocity and the velocity target, things like that. Uh, then there's you can do some sort of basic math stuff here too because uh, there's actually a couple of different enums that I will show off. Uh, and then a lot of stuff gets hard coded too. Like uh, the witch has the, uh, this is my terrible subroutine system. Instead of like actual functions that you can call, because I do still want the uh, game state to be very copyable. And this includes this. Yeah. I also wanted the scripting system to be sort of simple. I just have like four, I think, registers. Uh, so if I want to do an attack in direction one, I just uh, set. Uh, the first register to be 45 and uh, then execute it and it uses that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's silly, but it works quite well. Uh, but yeah, so for some yeah. other things, it's uh, not generic. Like I don't, I like writing Rust. I don't really want to uh, use a scripting language unless I uh, sort of have to. For things like showing off sprites in sequence, it, Rust is really not a natural language. Uh, like it's you need something like very co-routine and like super stateful to be able to handle that. Uh, so for that, like it's it's a nice sort of thing. But for things that are sort of more complex, like entity descriptions and like what spawning entities means, is uh, I just add a new sort of instruction for it. So the spawn Dorito thing here, which is what the witch mm -hmm. spawns, they're not really Dorito shaped yet, but uh, I think they will be <laughs> eventually. At some point. If it's eventually, they'll be Dorito shaped. Uh, uh, so yeah, here you can see my giant list of enums. Uh, so this is just an enum case, which takes a float and uh, two, vex, two vectors and another float, uh, which means something. Uh, I should probably comment that, but uh, maybe not. And yeah, uh, then later on, there, there's just a giant uh, switch case where, uh, okay, you can see that it's a Dorito idea, which is a float because I don't have integers. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, Lua. <laughs> Uh, and uh, does stuff based on that. And there's it just sets different things. Uh, I do have this thing too, where instead of being a, just a float directly, it's a D float, which I think stands for dynamic. And uh, can do this, uh, which is really just another enum, you know, uh, which could be either a constant, a uh, one of my registers, a V for variable, or some operation, or just a property of the game. So I can take a float and then multiply it by another float. 
uh, for example, and that sort of works out. It sort of ends up being sort of like a weird, uh, strongly typed Lisp where you can't actually do any of the cool Lisp things. At least there's a lot of parentheses. Uh, That's all you need for a Lisp, right? Yeah. I think so. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a computer <laughs> scientist, but I, I'm pretty sure that's how Lisp works. Sweet. Um, let me quickly check if there's more questions. Actually, like another thing that um, I know you did that's kind of like interesting is the um, the resolution of the game. When oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah different, I can talk about that. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's... Target uh, yeah, so... Uh, I can actually show that. The game is actually a sort of native 360p. Uh, and I ended up uh, going for this partially just because uh, a lot of the resolution is dependent on like what you need to show, right? Like there needs to be the big yeah. playing field in the middle and you need to show off some stuff at the top and bottom. And the sort of initial size was just uh, what was comfortable to show on my screen in a window and also like sort of just arbitrary values. I think the playing field was uh, 800, no, 400 by 200, I, no. 800 by 400. So there's like two 400 by 400 sides for like each player, uh, which was comfortable on my screen and uh, also is really terrible to like multiply to anything else. Uh, so, so nobody makes uh, like 400 uh, tall screens or uh, 800 or whatever. Uh, so I ended up needing to resize it to something else. And uh, I, I went. Uh, a lot of thinking about different resolutions. Like there's there's a lot of options. Well, not that many options, but there's decent options. But you wanna you wanna be good on 1080p, uh, and you also wanna look good on, uh, or at least for my case, I wanted to uh, sort of have a Switch or a Steam Deck part uh, mm -hmm. as an option in the future, and those run at 720p. So uh, you ideally want something that scales up nicely to that as well. Uh, and for pixel art, like it's not great to uh, scale up by like one and a half times because you know you get a lot of sort of different artifacts. So you're sort of almost bound to do 360p then because then you can 2x scale up to uh, the sort of uh, 10 uh, 720p thing, which is actually what I usually mm -hmm. run the game in, just because it's uh, well, it's a comfortable window size, and uh, you can also do uh, 3x for the uh, the 1080p experience. Mm -hmm. This did have the uh, Terrible side effect of uh, I've I've just gone by the principle of not having like a unit or anything in the game. Uh, everything is just in pixels. There's no like uh, the ball doesn't move in meters per second. It moves in uh, pixels per frame. I think it is even. It's not even okay. per second. Uh, so if you rescale the entire game by uh, two thirds, I think it was uh, that has some unfortunate effects on all the uh, data that you've already done. Uh, so I needed to go through and change basically every value to be multiplied by two thirds. I was thinking about maybe like just having that be the sort of internal resolution be like the the mm -hmm. four hundred p or whatever I had, or I suppose it was like six hundred p something like that. It was very silly, uh, but I decided that that. I could not live with that being in the code base. So I just had an evening where I sat and went through every single script and uh, multiplied all the values by two thirds to make them good. And I missed some of them. So like in some of the <laughs> tutorials, you would spawn off screen uh, until somebody uh, thankfully reported it to me. Uh, but mostly it worked out. There are some really strange uh, values though in the, uh, in the sort of configs now as a result though. Like I would not normally, like I don't try to do like super tight balance stuff. I, I do pretty extreme things and then sort of tweak it afterwards. But now because I didn't want to like rebalance things as I rescale the game, there's a lot of things that are like, Oh, this thing moves at uh, 5.66 pixels per frame, and that's uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. awkward values. Um, cool. We have one more question, which is also like a very interesting one. Um, what are some of the long-term plans, full release or site project? Uh, I do, I do want to have a full release for this eventually. It would be nice to sort of uh, get a publisher or something like that, just so that. Uh, not, not so much for the game itself, but because it'd be nice to uh, be able to have a proper soundtrack and uh, art for the game. Uh, I think that could be uh, very fun. I do have some people in mind uh, for music and art that I would like to be able to cool. pay to do that. And uh, so that, that'd be nice. Uh, and I'd like, to, I'd like to try and support it to get uh, as decent of a player base as it can. Like it's uh, obviously a pretty niche thing. It's a pawn with extra steps. Uh, but uh, quite a few people who have played it have enjoyed it quite a bit. So I'd like to sort of make it easier uh, to do that. Um, but that's the uh, that's the sort of longer term plans. So I don't have anything like sort of immediately planned. It is 
it's not feature complete. Uh, it's very uh, rough still, but it's uh, it's almost there. Uh, like I have a lot of the sort of basic bits uh, working quite well. Uh, it's it's a lot of the uh, polish and then art and music and uh, sound that's still missing. Yeah, I mean, like I personally appreciate a lot of like local multiplayer games because there's mm -hmm. nothing more fun than like yeah. you know inviting friends over and like playing on especially the switch um yeah. so this would be like um definitely yeah, I, think something I would recommend yeah. to a lot of my friends yeah. it's like hey let's play some pedal punks yeah um cool uh i'm just gonna like really check the check the chat um Oh yeah, since so this is um, also maybe like an obvious thing. Since this is kind of like Rust Fest and Rust and Arts, yeah. do you want to like quickly run through the crates? Oh yeah, like I could do frameworks that. and stuff that you, yep. that you use to uh, what do we got? put this together. Uh, there's no there's no frameworks per se. Uh, uh, it's actually uh, what do I got? Uh, the, the sort of base of the game is actually uh, it's um, SDL two for a sort of windowing and input handling, which is. Uh, a C library, but the bindings are quite nice. Uh, I've heard bad things about this sort of image drawing stuff, but uh, I'm not doing any sort of uh, rendering with it. I'm just using it for window handling. And that all seems to work quite nicely. And that's also something that uh, it deploys on a lot of platforms. Like I know, for example, that SDL2 works on the Switch. Uh, yeah. So if that's something I can actually do in the future, I know that this is uh, this would be a way of handling it. Although all of the stuff is pretty modular and divorced from each other. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the uh, rendering is uh, done via Gleam. Uh, I was considering doing Vulkan for a while because, I mean, if you're doing cool tech stuff in Rust, like Vulkan is a pretty obvious choice. Uh, that's what a lot of people do. Uh, but I just couldn't justify to myself knowing uh, <laughs> the sort of uh, sprites and uh, graphics that I knew that I was going to do. Uh, like I would be, I, I knew that I would spend a lot of time to draw like, a triangle and then I would need a second triangle and that'd be it. Like uh, all the, it's just, it, they're just quads. Uh, it's very unexciting in terms of rendering. Uh, so it's, uh, so I, I just uh, went for Gleam for that because uh, it's a nice uh, OpenGL wrapper uh, despite the warning on the uh, GitHub page. And uh, I had some familiarity with OpenGL before. So it's, uh, it's uh, quite nice. Um, what else have I got? Uh, I use a bunch of uh, things for uh, sort of uh, resource loading. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think Luton and Hound are both uh, related to audio. I think Og. Actually, maybe Hound is for encoding wave files, because I do that as well. I, I have a video export from my replay viewer. Uh, very primitive, but nice for sharing content. Uh, I do recommend, like, if you have a game or you're making a game engine, having tools built in for uh, sort of exporting uh, video and stuff from the game is very helpful, uh, especially if it's with replays. Because if something cool happens, you don't need to have like OBS or whatever running as you uh, as you uh, sort of do it. Um, yeah, you can just go in afterwards with the replay viewer and uh, sort of check out that specific part. Also good for debugging. Uh, if something weird happens, you can go back and see what that weird interaction was. Uh, I use log crates. Uh, those are fantastic. Uh, an arena. Uh, Discord in Tokyo are uh, for the sort of Discord uh, thing that pops up. Uh, I had a user ask me uh, to have that because he wanted to show off the game, which uh, was fantastic to hear. Uh, so I needed to spend an evening uh, doing that for him. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of sort of different things. Uh, bin code, uh, great for uh, sending stuff over the uh, network. Maybe, uh, probably not actually the way I do it, but it's working for now at least. Uh, and yeah, run, run is great. Uh, this is a weird branch with uh, a feature that I'm using, but otherwise, uh, yeah, run is uh, run is fantastic. Freeverb is well. Uh, reverb thing that I'm actually not using at all right now. Uh, I've made an audio engine for something else, and uh, it's part of that. So it's uh, it's in there waiting to be used. At some point, there will be different atmospherics for different places. Sweet. Uh, cool. Um, I think we're like kind of at our time limit, so yep. I would like to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. um, you have a Discord? Uh, yeah, like there's a Discord. Discord. Yeah. So uh, we will tweet this out, probably, unless you know yep. the short link. Uh, I do not know a short link. I don't know. Okay. Uh, we will tweet it yeah. out. We will have it yeah. in the chat. Yeah, I don't um, have a short link. It's not that big yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, cool. Thank you so yeah. much, Felix. Uh, Pelicans yeah. was awesome. I'm looking forward Thank to you. every release. Yeah. And um, with that, I declare the session over. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this was uh, so this was a fun time. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, rest of the uh, thing. <laughs> but I do. Uh, I will be gone for about an hour or two here in the middle. Okay. Uh, there will be more content. Yes, there will be more content. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you.